I see a long straight line athwart a continent. No chain of forts or deep flowing river or mountain range, but a line drawn by men upon a map nearly a century ago, accepted with a handshake and kept ever since. A boundary which divides two nations, yet marks their friendly meeting ground. The 49th parallel, the only undefended frontier in the world. Fine work, Herr. Magnificent, Herr Commandant. So the curtain rises on Canada.
Radio message received from Motorship Anticostalite. Reports attacked by German submarine latitude 40 degrees 15 minutes north, longitude 58 degrees 25 minutes west. Report sinking rapidly and only one boat seaworthy. Latitude 4015 minutes north, longitude 5825 minutes west. Warn all coastal batteries in the area to be on 24 hour watch until further notice. Warn all DF stations. All destroyer flotillas in conjunction with anti submarine units at Sydney, Canso, and Bay of Chaleur operate Plan Z. Turn every available patrol plane to locating the radar. Every available patrol plane to locating the radar. Find the captain. Question him. Kurika! Yes, I come with him. What in the devil's name are you doing? Where's your camera? You there! Come alongside! Hang on. Man the gun. Where's your captain? The old man's dead. He went down to the cabin to get the ship's papers. He must have got caught when she rolled. Your first officer. Jack is dead too, isn't he? Yes. yes. Your second officer. Here. Come on deck. The ship, the Anticostal Light. Your destination? Montreal. Your cargo? Crude oil. How many tons? 3,000. That's a lie. You're carrying a full cargo. 2,000 tons of crude oil and 5,000 tons of gasoline. Is that correct? If you say so. Action! Station! Prepare to dive! You dirty swine! Uh, yes, Half speed ahead. Flood five. Flood five. Depth 30 meters. Further. Five, 10, 20. Here come the boys! Only a fool would imagine we could raid enemy ships for supplies now. Outgoing ships will be detained. Incoming ships heavily convoyed, at least for the next few days. We must find a spot where the enemy is least likely to seek us out, which is not being patrolled every day, where they'll never think of looking for us. Hudson Bay. Icebergs about. What's our position? Three miles off point or more. If we go up, we risk the patrols, but we'll make better time. If we stay below, we risk the ship. I'm going up. Action station!
can see the opening dead ahead. Take a look, Herr. You're quite sure this is a pseudo-in draft? Yes, sir, Commandant. Those are the cliffs he mentions in his notes. Stand by. Radio message received via Resolution Island from Hudson Bay Post at Port Burwell. Eskimo Hunter reports two days ago seeing object proceeding due west through Hudson Straits. Navy German submarine U-37 warned Royal Canadian Air Force bases at Churchill and Wakeham Bay to send out patrols. Five degrees. 95 degrees, Herr Commandant. According to my luck, there should be a shelving beach at the end of the field. Will you go in? Yes. Then you can pick a landing party. Clean ship. I'll give you 12 hours. Cannon. Hmm. Lieutenant Hat, you have your orders. Lieutenant Kunica, you are second in command. You are taking one day's rations with you, not more. Your mission is to bring back food and fuel. Over that hill, you will find a Hudson's Bay trading post. If the men there are armed and are foolish enough to offer resistance, you will destroy them. Yarn up. Take this flag. As soon as the post is captured, you will hoist it, and I shall bring the ship in. Do not forget, you are the first of the German forces to set foot on Canadian soil, the first of many thousands. Be worthy of that high honor. Acquit yourselves like men and Germans. Each of you in the fulfillment of his duty is helping to bring about the completion of our Führer's great plan. Today, Europe. Tomorrow, the whole world. Heil Hitler. At ease. Follow me. Submarine ahead, off Wollstoneholm. Calling number two and three. Calling number two and three. Theater calling. Theater calling. Just spotted submarine. Going down to have a look, see. Maybe a Jerry, boys. Enemy attacking! Station. It's her, all right. U-37. It's the Jerry boys. Carry out attack. Number two leading. And Vicky, make it hot. Okay, kid.
Oh, it looks like a trapper's just got in. Johnny. Hey, what's going on here? Who are you? This one, boss, and this one. Just come in, Johnny. Somebody's fond of potatoes around here. Hey, there's a year's supply in that pot. This one, boss, him no eat potatoes. One whole year, Johnny. Stop calling me Johnny. Hey, and my hot water. He's been using my hot water, eh? This one, boss, very dirty boss. Him no take bath one whole year, Johnny. I know that voice. Johnny! Albert! Comment ça va, mon vieux? You old walrus! By golly, it's Danny to see you! Here, when did you get in? One half hour ago. I find the water on the stove and the dinner cooking, and I say, Johnny, you're in luck, mon vieux. Your friend Albert is a speck you! <laughs> what do you think of my whiskers? She's dandy, huh? Oh, mine are grand. <laughs> Give me a scissor and your razor quick. Oh, sure, Johnny. I'm hoping you're going to stay for a while this time. Sure thing. I stay till the boat comes. And wait till you see my skins. I had the best year I never had. And now I'm going to get so busy doing nothing. Yes, sir, I'm going to do nothing like she's never been done before. Hello, Winnipeg. Hello, Winnipeg. This is Wilson Home calling. Wilson Home calling. This message to be sent on to Three Rivers. Trois Rivières, Quebec. Trapper Johnny Barras is anxious to send a message to his father, Napoleon Barras, of... Uh, oh, hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ah, here you are. Of the uh, 32 Rue Crevice, and his mother, and his eight sisters, and six brothers, to tell him that he has arrived safely this evening at Wilson Home Post after a successful 11 months hunting and trapping. See? He says, thanks for sending on last year's mail, and the rosary, I, I, and the cake that kept very well in its airtight tin. Aye, and he says, he says, send on another one. Go on, Winnipeg. Hudson Bay House, Winnipeg speaking. Nice work, Johnny. This is Ed speaking. Hiya! Good night, Wilston Home. Good night. Good night, Winnipeg. Good night. Sheep time at Pangerton. Say, where's the sheep? I've been answering that question till I'm fair sick and tired of it. Not a soul comes to this post that doesn't ask it. Huskers and all. Where's the sheep, boss? Where's the sheep? Eh bien, alors, where's she? Behind the hill. Are we being served? Come on, sit down. Well, what's the news from home? <laughs> some good, some bad. Everyone is well, that is good. Business is slow, that is bad. My father's stay, it is because of them war rumors. But he tell me, no worry, this Hitler is only bluffing. And he said, they all say there will be no war this year or next year. Got your law, you look to me as I go mad. Of course, I was forgetting. You can't have seen a paper in over a year. What do you mean? Has it happened then? Sure it's happened. Bigger than the last? No, did you? Who fighting? Mostly everybody. Who started in first? Oh, the Germans, of course. They marched in on the Poles in September 1939. The Poles? Sure. My I thought all the Poles was in Canada. <laughs> no, no, Johnny. They've given Poland a terrible time. Wiped out Warsaw. Those poor refugees, you know, the women and children who tried to get away. The machine gunned them down. Ah, oh, yes, I sure. The Germans are ordinary men, same as you and me. I wouldn't do a thing like that, would you? Well, you can't tell me they do. That's all, newspaper talk to try and bring us in. It'll be a bit late, Johnny, my lad. 
We are in. Canada in the war? Sure she is. Didn't you hear the bombing tonight? Bombing? Was that bombing? Sure, one of our planes went across. Maneuvering, I suppose. So Canada, she and the war. Pas possible. And they are, you can't tell me French Canada got mixed in it too. <laughs> I certainly can't. Non de lieu. No, oh, they're in it just the same as everybody else. But that beat me. I don't see what for French Canada had to go to defend a bunch of Poles. I don't get that at all. I, I don't see what that mean to us. Anyhow, one kind government, much same like another. Well, you're right there. They're all the same. Don't get you nowhere. Well, anyhow, we needn't worry about it out here. I guess all we got to do is just to do our jobs. <laughs> that suit me. What about a wee drink, Johnny, eh? Uh, that suit me too. <laughs> Here's a skin off your nose. And off yours too, you old walrus. <laughs> <laughs> I won't sleep well tonight. Never do first night in real bed. Well, just the same when I was trapping. Oh, but get used to it in a couple of nights. <laughs> Dogs are noisy tonight. <laughs> Seem like you're and mine getting to know one another. Aye, the wind is blowing up. <laughs> Window, dog. Did you hear Kiss Kitsy? Bigger idea. Hello. Pull up. Come on, get over here. Come on, Here they are. All up here, right now. No one else, sir? Only this. Search him. Council Norman, search the other two. We've ammunition and rifles here. What are they? They're the cover. Frank, your rifles. Do you know some Mr. Cover? Comes no love. Where are the rifles? Better tell him. In the store. Which is the store? The big building outside with the company sign. Bogo Carts. What sort of crook are you? And he, oh, what's the game? Have you people in Canada not heard that there's a war on? <laughs> yeah, sure, we hear there war on. Moody <laughs> Cushum. You. German. Yes, German. We are German. Okay, why yell about it? Monsieur Compris, you German. I'm Canadian, he Canadian, and he Canadian. My father fight against you last time. We give you one good licking then, and we do it again. Johnny! Don't any you guy ever laugh? 
The English tell us we've no sense of humor, which means simply that our humor is different from theirs. Oh. I tell Nick he appreciate that. Nick? My sovereign, who your man kick when he can't kick back. The Eskimos are racially as low as Negroes. What's the matter with Negroes? They're semi-apes, only one degree above the Jews. Who says so? Those are the Fuhrer's own words from Mein Kampf. Oh. Why not? I make my living trapping animal, but if I was meat half ape, I wouldn't kick him in the stomach as you did at Husky in there. Please don't abuse our kindness. We're trying to befriend him, but you're making it difficult. Okay, okay, okay. Do you have to waste my batteries? I want you to answer a few questions. Let's hear them first. What transportation have you with the outside world? Transportation. Oh. I'll have to walk to the railway or else wait for the boat. When does the next boat arrive? In a scopy. If the weather's good, she'll be here this July. But if the ice closes, it'll be the July after that. I want the truth. You call me a liar? Yes. You ask me to believe that you've only one ship a year. Believe it or not, it's all the same to me, my wee man. Where's the nearest railway? Churchill. Churchill. And the nearest priest post? <laughs> You'll soon find out. <laughs> Lake Harbor. You seem to know all about it, eh? What strength is it? Uh, 30 men, or is it uh, 25, I'll bear? Or two. Oh, dear, get the cut. Will you get in? Get this, I'll bear. How about this for a map? Oh, it makes ours look a bit out of date. Where'd you get it? Did you ever meet a missionary called Malot? I'm not sure you remember him, Albert, the flying missionary. I mind him. You remember at that time his airplane was lost and all the people pray for his safety. He was a good he missionary. He was one grand fellow. And an even better map maker. Oh, so that was it. The spy and blackguard. I would never have believed it, a man of his cloth. One good, good priest like Malato. And a good German. for the far north, Cape Ross reports heavy slob ice. 9AUE calling CY7B. 9AUE calling CY7B. Come in, CY7B. CY7B? That's our call signal. Who is it? Oh, just a friend of mine. An American from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He plays chess with me. Chess? Sure, chess. Why? To pass the time. My fly don't often get such pleasant company here. The board's over there on the table by the radio. We play three nights a week, but not tonight. It'll be the first night we've missed in nearly two years. 9AUE calling CY7P. 9AUE CQing CY7P. Hope everything's all right. Say, what's the matter, Mac? Why don't you answer? This is Russell speaking. Try again in 15 minutes. If still missing, we'll report to Winnipeg. If still missing, we'll report to Winnipeg. Standing by. What is he going to report? Oh, well, an accident might have happened to me. I've got to do something about it. Why Winnipeg? It's the head office of our company. What company? The Hudson's Bay Company. Yes. Tell me, uh... Do you really march around in Berlin doing this? Yes. Oh. Why? I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. You always do, don't you? We're not on the ship now. The whole position's entirely different. You seem to forget that I'm a high party member. One of the first million in 1930. You didn't even join until 1936. One of the first 70 million, that's you. And I'm a practical man, too. I'm not a dreamer, an idealist like you. It's all a question of experience. I'm an engineer. I understand ships, I understand radio, I understand planes, and I understand human nature. I tell you, I'm right here. They must play chess. Our position is too dangerous to allow one of these men to have a free hand with a Free hand? With my gun at the back of his head? That makes no difference. Do you want that noisy American butting in and causing trouble? He's going to notify Winnipeg. They'll have heard about our submarine being bound, and they'll put two and two together. I'm right here. They must play chess. I move. Pawn H2 takes G3. Pawn H2 takes G3. Standing by. I told you not to make that move. I know what I'm doing. Watch me. Why should I watch you, may I ask? The game's lost. I haven't lost a game in two years. I haven't lost this one yet, have you? Are you ready? I am ready. 
Horn B7 to B5. Oh, say, why did my wife have to go to a double feature the one night I had you on the run? But you come to the wrong man. I won't guide you to the railroad, me. You never make it anyhow. Why not? This is one big country with very few people. Everyone know everybody. <laughs> you can't make a goose step through it without the police find out. But no one has seen us. Post you. Écoute. If one husky dog have the smell of you, his boss know from the way he howl that there is stranger in district. One Eskimo might find your track. Maybe have. Most likely that Eskimo is on his way to Mount Police right now. Perhaps, perhaps. She must help us. After all, it's your own interest. Now that your country has surrendered. My country? Surrender? At 12.30 on the 17th of June, 1940, France laid down her arms. France? And Canadian? Certainly, you're a French Canadian. But you must know that after the war, the Fury intends to liberate your people from the British tyranny. Come on. How? French Canada will be free. You will be free. Mais c'est idiotique, ma foi. I'm free. Or I was plenty free till you guys got in. I mean the freedom of your people and the oppressed minority. The freedom to speak their own language, to have their own schools and churches, to govern their own affairs. There you will find it written in the Fury's own words. Perhaps you've read it. Uh, I've no room in my pack for any book. I know my Bible. That's enough for me. This is the Bible. You must get a copy. It will explain everything to you as it has to me. You better look up how to get out of Canada, then. <laughs> Maybe she don't tell you that, huh? Ah, can I creak you funny? <laughs> Maybe uh, your Führer ain't so smart as he think. Don't he know that we French Canadians have always our own school and church and the right to speak as we want and run our own affair, by golly? No doubt you have certain privileges, but I don't feel... But let me ask you one question. Well? How about them uh, Poles? How about the French? Do you let them run their own affair? That is different. The whole new order in Europe. <laughs> OK, OK. You said enough. Hello, hello. Russell speaking. Say, my wife's just brought in an extra. The whole front page is covered with news about that submarine your flyers knocked off up there. Tell them the and headline I... reads, oh, Nancy. Oh, Lord, quit yelling in my ear and give me the paper. I want to read it to oh, them. Oh, Russell, you'll do no such thing. It's my story and I stick oh, to Ma, it. Oh, don't be it. He'll Mac will want to hear about it. And you take a back seat, honey, and I'll read it. All right, hello, honey, you hello. Read it. Is that you, Mac? This is Maud speaking. It says the submarine was sunk right in your backyard. I'll read it to you. Nazi U-boat sunk in Hudson Bay. That's a headline. A German submarine believed to be the U-37 was destroyed in Hudson Bay near Wollstenholme by Canadian Coastal Command patrol planes. According to an official report, the squadron leader claimed that several direct hits by medium bombs were scored before the Nazis could submerge. He circled the spot and found no signs of any survivors. There's a whole lot more to it than the gist of it. How come you didn't know about it? Yeah, why didn't you tell us? Hey! Get your rifle. Come on. You can't leave them there like that. Dirty lot of murderers. Fogel, see if they've heard anything outside. Killers, that's all you are. Killers. All quiet, Herr Leutnant. Good. Can't afford the shot. Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, my son. It's nearly one. Three. three. Four hours before there's anybody about. If anybody should come to the post, we'll see they don't get away. Grant Slurman. 
in the dealer room. What about the radio? Dead. I wonder if that American in Michigan got anything. Idiot! Well, let's do it, Kogel, eh? Yes, I like them. But if you were to... Shut up! Anything, Herr Leutnant? Shut up, can't you? <coughs> I've got it. Wake him up quickly. Herr Leutnant. Your Honor. Hmm? What is it? Come, Come on here, with the plane. Hudson's Bay Company. What are they saying? They're sending a plane. What kind of a plane? An emergency plane from Churchill. It'll be here in three hours. There's a police boat coming too from Lake Harbor. Johnny. We've got to get out of here quickly. Unless we can get hold of that plane they're sending. The company's sending a plane. Who can handle a plane? I can. Anyone else handle a plane? No, Herr Leutnant. No, Herr Leutnant. You don't doubt that I've had the experience. How many flying hours? Enough. Well, it'll have to be you, then. Loman. Hugo. What about our clothes? We can't go like this. You mean our uniforms? Don't be a sentimental fool. Can't expect to escape in these outfits. You're right for once. Men. This is our one chance of escape, our only one. We must be ready for it. We must have new clothes, money, food, rifles, ammunition. None. Don't lie to me, you sell things here. Not for money, it's exchange. Barter. Plenty of coats, Herr Leutnant. Yesterday, no come back in. Anybody else at the post? Trapper Johnny, stay one day. Auction eye! Auction eye! I'm a German officer. I warn you not to resist. Run, Liz! Fire! Aim low! She's far! Don't stand guard! Critical low and get the boats loaded. Yana! Hugo! Report to me and ready! some water. It's behind me. You're a Christian, aren't you? No, I'm not. What's he trying to say? He wants his rosary. What's the good of that to him?
son you. Some missionary. Already, Herr Leutnant. Thanks, laddie. Yes. 
emergency tank. Had to switch over, that's all. I suppose the emergency tank is full. Of course. Let me fill up at once and home. Did you check the emergency tank? Did you check the emergency tank? What difference does it make whether I checked it or not? But did you or didn't you? in your mess. Don't shout at me. I'm trying to take control. We'll make a forced landing. Forced landing must be the reverse to us, but 200 kilometers from the border. But I can't think of everything, can I? I can't help it if I make a mistake sometimes. Anyway, you're supposed to be in command. Why don't you handle the thing yourself? I wish I could. We're going to crash. What should we do? Nothing. Hang on. What should we do? There's a major head! All right, I'm not blind. Push! Herr Leutnant, Herr Leutnant! He's dead. So that's Kunica. German. German? The girl has a German newspaper. Germans here? Why not? There are half a million of us in Canada. Vogel, go and speak to us. See what you can find out. Don't try to be too clever. Keep as near to the truth as you can. Hello. Mm. Hello. That's a good-looking scarecrow. Mm. Why, you're only a kid. 
I thought you were much older than that get up. I'm 16. Are you looking for work? Yes. How did you know? You don't look like a hobo. Reaping started? Just begun. Are you on your own? Oh, those. Those are my pals. All right. I thought they were your pals. Why? Seasonal workers always travel in gangs. Well, these are my pals. Uh, this is... Anna. Anna. She's 16. It isn't true. I shouldn't lie. I shall be 16 the day after tomorrow. Well, it's only a difference of two days. Yes, but Peter says there's no difference at all between a small lie and a big lie. Who is Peter? Our leader. Oh, so you have a leader? Yes, a wonderful leader. You'll meet him. Aren't you coming to the settlement? There isn't another for eight miles. I told you we were looking for work. We should be glad to, but uh, there are four of us. Don't worry. When 111 people sit down for supper, four more won't make any difference. Did you say 111? 39 brothers, 47 sisters, and 25 children. Hmm. What are you? Mormons? Mormons? No, Hutterites. <laughs> I didn't mean we were all one family. We're only brothers and sisters in God. Anna, more bread for our guests. Sorry about the bread. Hmm. I know a bit about baking. I don't mind my saying so. He was getting a new baker. We had a good one, but he went to Small Springs. Mm. Better pay? Pay? Oh, no, no one gets paid here. Does anyone get paid anything? No. Oh, what do you work for then? Just your keep? No, for us all. Look. All these people work for nothing. Yes. Yeah. What sort of work? Whatever suits them best. Well, what do you mean? They don't choose themselves, do they? Haven't you got a leader of the community? Yes, there he is, over there. Well, which is your leader? There. Third from the right. Well, doesn't he tell the people what sort of job they've got to do? Well, no, we tell him what we want to do. And how could he be your leader? How do you mean? Well, Anyone works at whatever job they like, then. Yes, that's right. If somebody can make shoes, he makes shoes. If he wants to be a blacksmith, he works in the forge. If somebody feels he can preach, well, he preaches. Oh. What's your specialty? I'm the baker. When you sell your stuff in Winnipeg, what happens to the money? We buy new tractors, build houses, found new settlements. We've just founded a new one over at Small Springs. And if someone leaves you and then wants to come back, don't you punish them? Punish? Yes, don't you send them to a camp or something? Camp? Why a camp? No, we just take them back because our religion tells us to. The Hutterite religion, the Christian religion. Is it one of your rules to sing like this? We haven't any rules. We sing because we like to. It's good for the digestion. Well, good night. The leader will look after you. Thank you. What's the salute? The what? Don't you give the leader a salute? <laughs> good evening, friends. Good evening. On behalf of my friends and myself, I have to thank you for your kindness in giving us food and shelter. You're welcome. I uh, hear you come from up north in the woods, or down north, as we call it here. Yes. Just come out? Last week. Are you Germans? I ask, are you Germans? Yes. Are you ashamed of it? Of course not. I'll show you where to sleep. Thank you. 
find some from the same part of the old country as yourselves. Anna, I thought you would have told them all about us. Well, we mostly discuss birthdays. <laughs> well, it's quite an event with that 16th birthday. It means that one has grown up at last. Come in, please. This house belongs to Hugo Waldner, one of our brothers who's gone to the new settlement. A small frames. Yes. You see, we are like bees. If we get too many, we set out a swarm. So the house is empty and at your service. Good night. Sleep well. Good night. Hmm. That's what I call a busy girl. That's nothing. I make 14 beds every night. Mm, that's a lot of work. You see, we have a lot of men who have no mothers and who aren't married yet. So somebody has to make their beds. Quite right. Two of you can sleep in here, and there are two more beds in the other room. Where do you sleep? In Peter's house. In Peter's house? But I don't make the bed for him. Poor Peter. Why not? Because he has a mother to look after him. Haven't you a mother? No. She was drowned. Drowned? In the sea. When we left Germany, we went to England because we had to wait until we got a permit to come to Canada. We got our permit after war was declared. Was your father with you? Wait a minute. I want to hear about her mother. Her ship was sunk. Torpedo? I think so. Don't you know? Was there a big explosion? <laughs> Shut up, you two. You and your questions. Don't answer the manner. Oh, leave that. Run along now. I'll take her home. All right. You take her. Good night, Anna. Good night. Chin's up. Remember then, do nothing without orders. Discipline is more important now than ever. So far, luck has been with us. There's a great stroke of fortune being here at all. I do you think they're friendly, Herr Leutnant? Friendly? Yes. But you saw how their leader tried to draw us out. Are you Germans? Are you ashamed of being Germans? That in a country with which we're at war. There can only be one answer to that. Our agents have done their work well. Yes, this religion may be nothing but a cover. I bet they sing the hospital song better than hymns. We shall see that tomorrow. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Hitler. Shut the door. Well, Fogel, who knows? Perhaps one day the story of our adventures will all be written in a book. In a few years' time, it may be the basis of compulsory lectures to the Hitler youth. The ships we sank with women and children aboard. The lifeboats we shelled. Mm, we were good at that. What you did to the Eskimos at the post. The unarmed men were shot in the back. You forget Fogel were at war. You can't expect to win without the methods of total warfare. Men, women and children, they're all our enemies and must be treated as such. You never read what Bismarck said. Leave them only their eyes to weep with. Leave them only their eyes to weep with. Did he say that? Those were his actual words in the War of 1870. You should study Bismarck. He was a great German. A great German? Do you know, Fogel, I'm worried about you. You're a good fellow, but you don't discipline yourself. You give way to emotions. That'll land you in trouble one of these days. Why don't you take an example from Krantz, a fine soldierly fellow? You could be just as good a Nazi as he is if you tried. Are you listening, Fogel? Yes, Herr Leutnant. Then think it over. Yes, Herr Leutnant. Get out of bed and turn out the light. Yes, Herr Leutnant.
Vögle. Herr Leutnant? Have you seen Vögel? No, Herr Leutnant. We'll get dressed at once. He's asking for you. Huh? All right. Well, aren't you going? Well, I can't go till I've got this lot ready. What shall I tell him? Oh, I'll be long in a minute. Now, where's this new baker I hear about, eh? Now, that's what I call brain. Yes. You'll have to teach David the trick. Trick or no trick, I could never make bread as good as that. Mm, cheer up, David. It took me seven years. Why did you want to give it up? Well, I didn't want to give it up. I had to. You see, we all had... Peter, just come and look at this bread. Good morning, friend. Mr. Fogel is the best baker we've had here in 15 years. I can't imagine why his last boss let him go. Must have been crazy. It wasn't then, he is now. Congratulations, Fogel. It was a good idea. What's the news in Winnipeg? The market was good for geese. People are asking for Hutterite geese. I don't like that, Andreas. No? For 300 years, our brethren have wandered from place to place, from country to country, because of the jealousy of others. This is a good country, Andreas. I met Frau Haberman. Yes? Oh, her trial was on today, wasn't it? Her husband and her eldest son, Erich, are to be interned. She's free. Bad luck. Just at harvest time. Wasn't a good day for the trial. Papers are full of stories about those Germans who landed from a U-boat down north. They seem to have acted like wild beasts, killing and stealing. What's Frau Habermann going to do? I had a talk with her. She needs help on the farm. Oh, it'll be difficult. We'll talk it over. Tell the others we'd have a meeting tonight, yes? Air's yes, heavy. Afraid we are going to have a storm tonight. Sorry, sorry I'm late, Peter. Barbarina, there's an electric storm playing all around us, frightening the animals and your chickens. Move over, Philip. What about you, Anna? Andreas, yes? one of our guests is speaking. Eh? What? Oh, good. We were discussing the Habermans. I was about to say, you have one clear choice. Where there is a question of blood, where one is governed by the deepest of racial instincts, then every other consideration is swept aside. Men like yourself, German or of German ancestry, rise up with all the might and power of the great German people behind you, conscious of the sacred duty that binds us all together and in the knowledge that he who does not forget his people will not by his people be forgotten. 
There is a new wind blowing from the east. A great storm coming across the sea. A hurricane which will sweep aside all the old outmoded ways of life and mark the beginning of a new order not only for Europe, but for the whole world. Let those beware who would have the temerity to stand in its way. They will go down before his irresistible impulse and be crushed out of existence. But for those who accept the new order, for those who perhaps belong to it already, why need I use these parables of speech any longer? I mean, all of you here tonight. Yes, you, brothers. I call you brothers and proudly acknowledge you as such. You who formed the little stronghold of our people here in Canada, you will have your share of the happiness and prosperity that is waiting for us all. When the storm is over and the sun rises, that mighty sun, which will give us everything we need in life. What sun are you talking about, friend? I am talking of the greatest idea in history. The supremacy of the Nordic race, the German people. I am talking of the being whose name I am certain lives in every heart, whose name hangs on all our lips whether we can shout it to the world or only whisper it in one another's ears. Germans! Brothers! I ask you to join with me in paying homage to our glorious Führer, Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! I don't ask where you come from or what brought you here. Although you've left us in no doubt as to your beliefs. Someone has given you, no doubt deliberately, a completely false impression of us. We are only one amongst many foreign settlements in Canada. There are thousands of them in this part of the world. And they've been founded some recently, some 80 years ago by people who left their homes in Europe because of famine, because of starvation, because of racial and political persecution, and some, like ourselves, because of their faith. Some came only to find new land, new boundaries, a new world. But all have found here in Canada the security, peace, and tolerance, and understanding which in Europe it is your furious pride to have stamped out. You call us Germans. You call us brothers. Yes, most of us are Germans. Our names are German, our tongue is German, our old handwritten books are in German script. But we are not your brothers. Our German is dead. However hard this may be for some of us older people, it's a blessing for our children. Our children grow up against new backgrounds, new horizons. And they are free. Free to grow up as children. Free to run and to laugh without being forced into uniforms, without being forced to march up and down the streets singing battle songs. You talk about a new order in Europe. The new order. Where there will not be one corner, not a hole big enough for a mouse, where a decent man can breathe freely. You think we hate you, but we don't. It is against our faith to hate. We only hate the power of evil which is spreading over the world. You and your Hitlerism are like the microbes of some filthy disease, filled with a longing to multiply yourselves until you destroy everything healthy in the world. We 
are not your brothers. What do you want? I've come to tell you that you can make your own beds. I don't want to work for you. That's all right, Anna. Run along now. You're an Nazi, aren't you? Aren't you? We are not allowed to hate anybody. But I hate you. I believe you escaped from an internment camp. I should tell the police about you. You killed my father because he said your Führer was the Antichrist. You drowned my mother. I hate you. I hate you. Now you're going to tell the police about us, are you? Little girls should be seen and not heard. That'll do. What's the matter with you? That'll do! Fogel! Come along, Anna. I'll take you home. Herr Leutnant, we can't let them go. I'd like to see what you're going to do about it. Oh, no. Yes, Herr Leutnant. Have you forgotten who you are? No, Herr Leutnant. Let the girl go and shut the door. I'll take her home, Herr Leutnant. Is that you, Anna? Yes, Peter. I brought Anna home. She's all right. We're going now, perhaps in a few minutes. I only wanted to say that you've been kind and I like it here. You like my bread and I like the way you live. Being with you has made me feel like it used to be at home. I'd almost forgotten what it was like. Baking bread, doing my real work. That's how it used to be seven years ago before everything changed. The life I've been living seems to have no sense in it now. Well, I'd better go now. Please don't go. Are they still talking? Hush, child. Go to sleep. How can a man like you, Fogel? I mean, you're a simple, good human being. How can you get mixed up with such a lot of gangsters? What can you do? When you're a boy, you like playing soldiers. When you're a young man, you can't get work unless you belong to them. When you're an old man, you're anxious not to lose what you've got. But there are thousands of men like you, Fogel. Men who don't like the way things are going. I suppose so. I suppose they don't know themselves. I didn't know. It's as if a blind man said he doesn't know the sun shines. I suppose so. Why don't you stay with us, Fogel? Do you mean it? Of course, I mean it. Even if you know who I am, where I come I from... I don't care who you are, where you come from. I know you. Thank you, Peter. It will mean internment. What's it matter? I'll come back after the war. This is your home. General Martivisa Fogel. You're under arrest. You're accused of desertion and treachery to the Third Reich. 
In the absence of a properly constituted court, I assume authority as your superior officer and sentence you to death. Have you anything to say? The sentence will be carried out immediately. In the name of the Führer. Glasses. What for? Food. You can't eat them. I can sell them. They're his. Come on, come on. They belong to the fatherland. It wouldn't let us starve, would it? Congratulations, Roman. No field glass has ever had a better end. We shall view the future better through these. <laughs> How much did he give you? Seven dollars. Well, what are you waiting for? Saw what the bulletin said. They're watching the border. But they don't know there's only three of us. They still think they're five. Police aren't fools. They'll find out soon enough. If we're caught, it won't matter whether there are three or five or ten of us. We're going to change our plans. We're going to Vancouver. Vancouver? A Japanese ship leaves Vancouver in a month's time. Is it far to Vancouver? About 2,000 kilometers. We can never get as far as that. The Fuhrer has never admitted the word can't. Neither should we. Our one consideration must be how to get to. I'm sorry, sir. How to get home. Doesn't matter how we do it, but we will get home. That's how he works. He says that it's Germany's destiny to rule Europe. Doesn't matter how she achieves that destiny, but she will achieve it. Give me this. These Canadians give everything away. The road west is plain enough. Follow the river to for 50 miles. Do we start now, our headlight, then? No. I will sleep tonight in the railway station. Tomorrow we'll catch a bus outside the city limits, then walk. He wanted us to fly to Vancouver. Said it'd save a lot of time. <laughs> what did you say, headlight? I said with plenty of time. 2,000 kilometers is plenty of kilometers. <laughs>
Those are the Three Sisters Mountains. We're in the park now, Vance National Park. Today's Indian Day. The biggest crowd of the year. Three thousands of Indians. You should stop over and see it. I have an appointment in Vancouver. Attention, please. The Mounted Police has reason to suspect that among this crowd are three enemies of this country. They are not ordinary aliens escaped from Kananaska's internment camp. They are survivors from a German submarine, the notorious U-37, which was sunk in Hudson Bay by our Air Force. These men are here in this courtyard. They may be standing right next to you. Each one of you, look closely at your neighbor. These are descriptions of the three men. One who appears to be the leader is a well-built man of medium height. He has very definite features, a commanding manner, is clean-shaven, brown hair. He wears a blue suit and tan shoes and carries himself as if he'd been drilled. There is no very good description of the second man. He is thin and inconspicuous in his manner. He wears a suit of some light color and a hat tilted over his eyes. He may be carrying a bulky rucksack. The third man is short and dark. He wears no hat. He has a tweed jacket and a bow tie. He carries a parcel wrapped in oil cloth and tied with thick string. He is described as being nervous in his manner. I must ask all of you to stay exactly where you are and not talk or move. All of you as citizens can help to bring these men to justice. Each one of you Look closely at your neighbor. Remember, each one of these men has every reason to be afraid. They have already been responsible for the death of 11 defenseless people. Sooner or later, their nerves will crack. Look closely at your neighbor. Stop. 
I like them because they're true. Come on, then. Lost? Yes. It's a difficult trail on foot in those outfits. You walked in from the lodge, I suppose. Yes. Any plans? Plans? Well, it'll be dark in an hour. Moon doesn't rise till 11. A lot of grizzlies on that trail. Grizzlies? Grizzly bears. Touchy beasts. You wouldn't like them. And <laughs> they wouldn't like you. I see. Ah, dinner. You're just in time. George will be pleased. Whoa, you're Toby Gino! Tricky things, aren't they? The great thing is just to sit still. On holiday here? Yes, on holiday. How do you find the lodge? They used to do you a very good lobster thermidor with the red Bordeaux. They still do you the lobster, but no more red Bordeaux. A nuisance, isn't it? Huh? The war. Uh, anyhow, up here in the Rockies, the war seems so remote one can't take it so seriously. Of course, one knows one half of humanity is trying to wipe out the other half, but up here among the mountains and the spruce forests, one sees it in perspective, so that it, it seems almost unimportant. You've chosen a very beautiful place for your holiday. Yes, it is beautiful, isn't it? Actually, I'm here to work on a book. Oh, so you're a novelist. Well, I, <laughs> I write books. My specialty is Indians. This has been a hunting ground of theirs for generations. Then I... I suppose you would have Banff today. For Indian Day? No, 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 no. That's just for tourists. Oh, I beg your pardon. Ship ahoy! Well, gentlemen, welcome to my humble teepee. Two this time, George. I'm improving. And tell Bob two more for dinner. Well, it must be very pleasant roughing it up here in the mountains. Yes, I rather like picking it occasionally. I hope you won't mind taking potluck with me. Here, have a cigarette. Okay. Ah, I see you're looking at my Picasso. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. How do you feel about Matisse? I picked these up about a year ago and I can't bear to be parted from them. How do you like it? Hmm? Excellent. <laughs> yes, I don't think you two are really interested in pictures. Well, my motto is, wars may come and wars may go, but art goes on forever. Ah, you like reading, don't you? Have you seen Hemingway's latest? Yeah, I'm going to show you one of my pets. There, yeah. Thomas Mann, The Magic Mountain. This is the German edition. <laughs> this is wonderful stuff. Sein Alter wäre schwer zu schätzen gewesen. So, by the way, do you speak German? Have you read this book? Thomas Mann is very good, I believe. I'm so sorry. Of course you want a bath after your long climb. I'm afraid I can only offer you a shower. Come on, I'll show you the way. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Philip Armstrong Scott. Come on. Philip Armstrong Scott. Ah, hot water. 
be completely confident tonight. If we twice as far to go, I wouldn't worry now. What could these weaklings ever do to us? The man's constant at war, and look at him. I tell you, Lerman, they're rotten to the core. There's no fight in them. They're soft and degenerate all through. No. I'll have cold. <laughs> George, the fire's smoking. South, south, east by south. Ah, that's the ticket. Yes, I've discovered some rather amusing things during my researches. Blackfoot tribal customs, for instance, closely resemble those of a certain modern European tribe. I'm going to read you something about that. Where are we? From the earliest age, their small boys were trained in the arts of war, which they considered to be the only pursuit worthy of a man. But they preferred to attack by night rather than by day, and wherever possible to shoot the enemy in the back. Their smaller neighbors lived in constant danger from them. They also believed in first terrorizing their opponent by covering themselves in war paint and beating loudly on their tribal drums. Well, doesn't that sound familiar to you? Familiar? I don't quite understand. Well, what price Goebbels, eh? Very similar. Yeah, you see, don't you? And listen to this. <laughs> this is wonderful. Come here, sit down. Ah. Uh, all right. When a tribal leader really desired to drive a point home, he used that most terrible of all public speakers' weapons, repetition. Constant and unutterably wearisome repetition. Old man Hitler himself. What's wrong? I think he found it a little warm in here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, rather stuffy in there, eh? A little. Lovely night, isn't it? The moon's just out. We're not the only ones up, I see. <laughs> the men, eh? When did they go to bed? Oh, pretty early, as a rule. They please themselves. You must be rather tired yourself. How about a nightcap before you turn in? Thank you. Here. Ah. Interested? <laughs> Have a drink. <laughs> Happy dreams. Whew. Okay. Ah, I thought you find it a bit chilly. We're 6,000 feet up here, you know. So you think you'll escape the war, Mr. Scott? Hmm? That's not a very nice way of putting it. But you'll do your best to escape it. Do you mean I'm... I wonder if I am. I don't think I'm a coward. I've never really been in any great danger. I don't exactly know how I'd behave. I can imagine how you'd behave. I beg your pardon? I said I can imagine how you'd behave. Well, you are an extraordinary fellow. You're certainly frank. So you despise my mode of life, eh? Well, I'm getting some revelations tonight. Maybe it'll do me good. Maybe I'm becoming a little smug. I imagined you'd been thinking, here's a nice, decent sort of chap. Invites me to dinner when he doesn't even know me. Amiable. Full of interesting conversation. And instead of that, you think I'm... Well, go on, what do you think I am? This ought to be enlightening. If you were a real man, you'd have struck me across the face when I suggested you were a coward. Instead of which, you'd talk about it. Well, why not? I may write about the customs of Red Indians 200 years ago, but I don't have to behave like one. 
After all, we've been given reasoning powers and the gift of speech. Why don't we use them instead of hitting each other? Come on, have a cigarette. I don't think you're even a coward. I don't think you're a man at all. You must have had too much to drink. You both better get to bed. It is gun loaded. Of course it's loaded. Then put your hands up. What do you mean? It's quite plain. Put them up. Well, well, well. This is a new experience. So I've been entertaining gangsters. Well, what do you want? Money or what? You don't believe it, shoot you, do you? Such a thing couldn't happen to Mr. Philip Armstrong Scott. Anything unpleasant must be kept as far away as possible. As far as the war, 5,000 miles away. Suppose I were to tell you that the war is right here in this tent. I don't suppose you've heard of the U-boat that was sunk in Hudson Bay and the six Germans who escaped. So that's who you are. Nazis. Well, that explains everything. Your arrogance, your stupidity, your bad manners. Get over there by your books! Oh dear, do I have to be tied up? Excuse us, Mr. Scott. We still employ savage tribal methods. They get results. The best thing that's happened to us is meeting you. You put the heart back into us. There are only two of us now. Two out of six brave men. So there are millions like us in Germany. Any more of your sort here, you don't stand a chance of winning this war. We'll see to that. Get them close out of that. Well, they won't suit you. Not much there, I'm afraid. Thirty-three dollars. Do I get a receipt? There's only one suit here. You better have the overcoat. Interesting. So far, I don't feel the least afraid. No sign of trembling. Pulse appears to be quite steady. Mouth a bit dry, perhaps. Yet. Rifles. Ah, you feel happier now, don't you? Look out! Wars may come and wars may go, but art goes on forever, eh? Thomas Mann. Yes, I have read this book. We kicked this swine out of the Reich years ago. There's something else, too. Blackfoot tribal customs. Think ourselves lucky we don't burn you, too. Well, I never would have believed that grown-up men could behave like spiteful little schoolboys. Have I said something to annoy you? Then I forget anything reasonable annoys you. Open your mouth. One question, please. When Hitler's making a speech, just exactly what are your... Rea Horses. Damn beat it again. Maybe they got wind or something. Yeah, maybe bad. Oh, there they go. Saddle out here. Confound it, there's another one. The boss must have gone crazy. You made a fine mess of things to rouse the whole camp. The horses were your idea. I knew they'd give trouble. You forget yourself, Lorman. Save your breath here. Hey, Bob! They're gone down by the lake. Get! Not that way! Who are you talking to? You're not my superior officer now! Obey orders and follow me! 
Orders me! Come on, George. Art! Boss. Hold up, those two fellows. No. Yes. Who? Oh. oh, there's one of them. Good old George. Looks like he's lost it. Confound it. He's got it, the old gut out. Come on. Where is he, George? In the cave. Who? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get him. Which one of them two is it, boss? I don't know. Did you see, George? <laughs> Scott! All right, boss. I forgot to tell you, Art. He's got my coat, too. See that hole? That's gonna cost him seven bucks before I let the Mounties get him. That means he's got four shots left. All right, Bob, I'll take over now. Okay, boss, but I don't hey, think you ought to take any... stay with you, Mr. Scott. The papers say these men are killers. Yes, the Canadian papers. The Nazi papers call them heroes. Two brave Nazis against 11 million Canadians. Say, Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott! Stop him! One. Two. Three. Four. That's the lot. Oh, it's you. I hoped it was the other fellow. That's for Thomas Mann. That's for Matisse. That's for Picasso. And that's for me. All right, you can fetch him out now. You all right, boss? Well, you can't expect me to capture an armed Nazi without getting hurt a little. Yet. Here, yeah, let me have a look at that. The boss has knocked him cold. Well, he had a fair chance. One armed Superman against one unarmed decadent Democrat. I wonder how Dr. Goebbels will explain that. Leutnant Hirt, wherever you may be on the North American continent, I hail you as the paladin of the Third Reich and the upholder of the honor of the great German people. By express order of the Führer himself, you have today been invested with the Iron Cross, first class. Heil Hitler. Lethbridge, Alberta. Mounted police pick up trail of escaping Nazi. At Lethbridge Airport, Kenyon Field, 
It's been established that a man resembling the wanted man, Lieutenant Hirth, planed in yesterday on trip 22 from Edmonton and Calgary. The hearts of all sympathizers with the German cause go out to Leutnant Hirth, one man against 11 million. They know that even now the odds are not too heavy when the one man represents the might of the Third Reich and the 11 million a collapsing democracy. 48 hours have elapsed and still Lieutenant Ernst Hirth the only surviving Nazi from the U-37 is at large. The whole world's eyes are on southern Ontario. The question of the hour is, where is Hirt? Say, what's your name? Oh, forget it. I haven't seen you and you haven't seen me. Me. I won't split on you. I'm not afraid. Looks like you got a nice private car. Have a cigarette. Toronto. I didn't see much of it. Are you from the West? No, I've been there. Vancouver? Yes. That must be a beautiful city, Vancouver. I didn't stay there long either. You don't stay along anywhere, do you? I travel about a good deal. Travel about. That's a lot of fun. When I was a kid, I had the big idea to see the whole of Canada. But things don't work out the way you think. I save a bit of money and what do I do? Put it in my pocket and start off down the road, my own boss with the whole of Canada in front of me. Not on your life. I buy a bit of land up Beansville way, and that keeps me so busy, that's about all the Canada I see. Have a shot of Ontario wine. Catawba. I send the grapes to the winery from my own farm. Sherry type. Thank you. Got a kick like a mule. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I'll take a holiday. But do I take a holiday? Not a bit of it. I take a wife. Say, were there any MPs around while you've been here? MPs? Military police. Are you in trouble with the police? Oh, not exactly what you'd call trouble. I just don't want to meet them, that's all. Are you a soldier? Well, that's a matter of opinion. It's what I joined up to be. The government said, we want men to fight the Nazis. Join the day. So I joined. I figured they were in a hurry. That was 387 days ago. Four divisions and a lot of drafts have gone overseas. And what's number B987642 doing? Guarding the Chippewa Canal. Who want to steal it anyway? Well, I guess I better climb back into my battle room. You think our government have treated you badly? Well, what do you think? I didn't enlist to play nursemaids. I enlisted to knock hell out of the Nazis. I'm about as close to getting my hands on a Jerry now as I was at the beginning. 
We don't eat so good. Holy Mackinac. Beef three times a day. Haven't tasted parsnips since I joined the army. I'm fond of parsnips, too. Why are you afraid of the police? Who's afraid of the police? Just overstayed my leave eight days. That is a serious offense in wartime. It is with my CO. You're a deserter. Deserter, my Royal Canadian foot. I'm just independent. You're a deserter because you have a legitimate grievance against your democratic government. Say, where did you pick up those five-gallon words? You have a good suit? Sure, it's a good suit. Paid 25 bucks for it two years ago. And along comes that heel Hitler. It's a very good suit. It's a dandy suit. Just now, most of the boys are wearing these. Yes. Son of a... Stand up. Put your hands up. Stand over there. Unless you're anxious to be shot, you won't move. Perfectly ready to kill you or anyone else. Yeah, I can see... Uh... Fourteen grams of carbide. Don't move. Fourteen grams. Who's moving? Nine cans of germicide. Okay. Go get everything checked, all right? Okay. Seal her up. A deserter now. What do you mean? They're taking us clear out of the country. Out of the country. Into the States. We're crossing the border now. Into America. Heil Hitler. You dirty Nazi. Yes, I'm a Nazi. Heil Hitler. One of them off the U boat. Quite right, my friend. In two minutes, I should have crossed the border. Once there were six of us. Now I represent them all. Field Marshal Goering has said it doesn't matter as long as we have only one plane and one man left, so long as victory is ours. You hear that? We've beaten these dirty democracies, these weaklings. I tell you, it's something inside us, something beyond the dim, muddy minds of you in the democracies. What do you know of the glorious mystical ties of blood and race that unite me with every German Aryan? When I step on American soil, I shall not be alone. Adolf Hitler and all the great German people will be with me. It's not the Canadian people we're against. It's your filthy government, the whole democratic system. You don't like it any more than I do. You don't like the job they've given you. You don't like the food. You said so yourself. Why, you said... spoon-fed louse. I can grouse about the food and the CO and anything I blame, please. And that's more than you with your Gestapo and your stormtroopers and your Aryan bourgeois. Ah, oh, nuts. What's the good of talking to you? You can't even begin to understand democracy. We own the right to be fed up with anything we damn please and say so out loud when we feel like it. When things go wrong, we can take it. We can dish it out, too. Checking on me, Mark, and just for a change, huh? Go on and wrestle some boxes. It'll be good for you. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey. Oh, 
Lady Godiva. Who are you two? I'm, I'm Andrew answered. Brock, Canadian Actor Service Force. You're a lookout, and you? We're on American territory? Yes. I have Ernst Hitt, a German citizen. I demand to be taken to the nearest German consul. Don't do it. Send him back. He's an escaping Nazi. He slugged me. That's my uniform. Hey, this gun is loaded. No. By an American law, you must take me to my consul. Is that right? I'm afraid it is. He's one of that gang off the German submarine, the U-37. Yes. On the level? I am Lieutenant Hitt of the German Navy and also a German citizen. And I demand... You've got to send him back. He's not just an escaping Nazi, he's important. The whole German nation is waiting to see if he can get away with it. I know, I read the papers. Hey, couldn't we sort of, you know... You mean... Yeah. No. By your own law, you must take me to my consul. Well, sometimes I think we got too many laws. Don't let them pull that law stuff. You know better than that, soldier. I'm a customs inspector. This is for the immigration department. My job's inspecting and checking on freights and imports. Listen, Captain. What would you do if he were an illegal shipment of... Cheese. Return him. But he's a human being. At least he's a Nazi. He's not on the manifest, is he? What? I said he's not on the manifest. No. No. No, he's not. The American law... Oh, shut up. I know the law. It says imports are not admissible unless properly manifested. I find two items not listed. How do you check? Same way, two unlisted items. But your law refers to freight, not to persons. This is a freight car, and you're freight. Tell the engineer to return this car. Okay. Phone those Canucks and tell them it's coming with two items missing from the manifest. Tell them to either list them or take them off. Check. Thanks, Colonel. Thanks a million. We've all got to do our duty, soldier. Now send your gun back to the Mounties. Okay. I don't need it. But I protest! You cannot do this! It's illegal! Sonny boy, I've done it. Hello, Macaulay. It's Eddie speaking. We're sending back car number 8772. Gee, you guys are getting careless. There's two items not in the manifest. Now either list them or take them off. I'm just taking them. 